Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And before we get into today's video, just a little announcement here at the front. Today is the last day to enter into the 40,000 subscriber giveaway. If you want to know what's being given away, we're giving away one premium ship over the next five days. So Tuesday to this Saturday. And if you want to enter, you need to go check out last week's Monday's video, which is another top five video. Monday is our top five uh, day. And in that video's comment section, you need to enter in your username, your server, and a witty comment. Make sure you are subscribed. That ensures that the bot that will be looking at that comment section starting tomorrow will choose your comment because it's only going to pick a subscribed comment. So make sure you have all that done and entered into last week's Monday's video. And again, the giveaway will start tomorrow, giving away one premium ship over the next five days for a lucky commenter and subscribe commenter at that. I will reply to your comment, favorite it, that should ensure that you get the notification. Once I have selected, well once the bot has selected the comments, you have 24 hours after I reply to your comment in order to reply to my comment and we'll get you your ship or your doubloons if you want. We're doing any premium ship that I can buy for you in the premium shop or the doubloon value of said ship, or just, you know, the bloom value up to a, a tier 9 ship if you would like that. So make sure you go into that, that is in last week's Monday's video. Alright, going on to today's video, we have top 5, my top 5, removed premiums. Now, what do we mean by a removed premium? We mean a premium ship that was once for sale in the premium shop or in the armory, and has such been removed, has since then been removed. Not a ship that's been completely removed from the game, because that's only one ship, it'd be a very short list at that. So just ships that are no longer available for sale. So let's go ahead and get on right into it, shall we? Coming in at number 5, we have the Tier 9 Premium American Cruiser, the Alaska. The Alaska is one of the hands-down best large cruisers in the game as they are called now they're no, no, no longer referred to as super cruisers since we have actual super cruisers in the game which i find kind of funny but yes one of the original large cruisers she is without a doubt one of the best ships in the game so good she was removed is she broken i wouldn't say so so she's really strong her guns are excellent. She gets that American AP on her 310, 305 millimeter guns. I think it's 310s. Which means you have small guns for, of course, you know, a battleship, quote unquote. But they sure pack one hell of a punch. Now, the trick here is that, unlike the American battleships, which also have the Mark 8 super heavy AP shell, even though the American battleship shells are quite slow, because they are still, you know, 16 inch shells, they will still overpin cruisers from time to time. Less so than equivalent battleship caliber shells. But with the Alaska, you have a smaller shell, which means you don't overpin cruisers near as much as you do with a 16 inch gun, obviously, but you still pack one hell of a punch. In addition, in addition to that, she has spectacular HE. So you either set it all the target to death, or you switch over to your HE and you just melt it down. She has a choice of Hydro, I'm sorry, no, 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 she comes with Hydro and Radar, so, I mean, that's, what, else, what, what more else do you want? You can spot torpedoes, spot ships and smoke screens, you can radar ships and smoke screens, radar those pesky little destroyers that are trying to sneak about, all in a ship that has a 27mm hull. Her bow is 27mm, so is her stern, so she can show the middle finger to quite a few battleships that other large cruisers can't, because most of those nowadays have usually, usually, 25mm of armor. This ship is fantastic, she has a lot of utility, a lot of firepower, and what's really cool about the Alaska is that she will be coming back up for sale in the upcoming Black Friday event. Now, I know I've said this about this ship and a couple others, and quite a few commenters saying, but Sea Lord, they, they've already released the list of new Black Friday ships, Alaska, Massachusetts, uh, John Barr, they aren't there. They aren't, but with each Black Friday event, all the previous Black Friday ships are included in the event. They've been like that for the last four or five years. They've already announced that those ships are coming back this year as well. So Alaska is a ship that has been removed, but will be coming back up for sale. And one that I highly recommend you get if you've gotten to Tier 9. Fantastic boat. Fun boat to play. Great in randoms. Great in competitive. Again, one of the best ships in the game. Alright, going on down to number 4, we have the Tier 10 Pan-European Destroyer. The Smallland. Smallland. 
this ship is one of the best DDs in the game, especially when it comes to cap contesting and competitive. No matter what, un unless they absolutely outright ban it in competitive, this ship is pretty much always going to be there. You have here a excellent gunboat with radar, with a heal, with an emergency engine boost, and very rapid firing guns. You can get this thing's reload down to around 1.7 seconds before you get adrenaline rush and such kicked in. In addition to that too, she has, of course, pan Euro torpedoes. Now sure, they don't pack the biggest punch, but they re reload fairly quickly as well. In addition to the heal and to the radar, this makes this ship an excellent contester of caps. And in many cases, unless you're running into a destroyer with a gimmick like reload booster or something like with the French, destroyers you're pretty much guaranteed to win that fight unless you goof up who is getting ice cream it's 41 degrees outside i'm sorry i don't know if you guys heard that but the ice cream truck just drove by my neighborhood okay okay i guess kids want ice cream when it's already 41 degrees outside but anyway yes small and one of the best cap contesting dds and a dd that is fairly easy to play for newer dd players she's very forgiving of course with the heal with the emergency engine boost you can get out of tight situations pretty fast but she doesn't have a smoke screen so you do have to keep your eye out for exit routes out of the cap or out of whatever area that you're in because you you can get screwed with that lack of a smoke screen as long as you're paying attention going for the caps contesting it playing smart this is a ship that you can easily do very well and even if you're not the best dd player ever which is why I, it's one of my favorite destroyers to play again excellent dd she has since been removed since her original release and they haven't mentioned if she's coming back for sale anytime soon unfortunately Alright, going on down to number 3, we have everyone's favorite tier 10 British battleship, the Thunderer. Now, the Thunderer is a ship that, in my opinion, was broken from her initial release. The Thunderer has 8 457mm 18-inch guns, and while they may not have the overmatch of 460mm guns, these guns still hurt like hell, because you can actually land shots with these battleship guns pretty consistently. Unlike most other battleships whose guns might be more accurate than some others, they still have you know, a bit of screwy dispersion here and there. The Thunderer has accurate guns with an excellent re re reload time as well to boot. In addition to that, too, she gets the normal AP, not the short fuse British BBAP. So these 18-inch guns really bite, especially into armored targets, and unarmored targets, too, of course. I mean, they're 18-inch guns. It's going to hurt when you get hit by them no matter what. Not only is the AP quite excellent on the Thunderer, the HE is very good as well. If you build into it, you can have a 65% fire chance on guns that are very, very accurate which pretty much ensures that you're going to be setting plenty of fires. Thunderer is one of the easiest ships to get your fire missions done in. If you got a fire mission for the dockyard or for whatever challenge that you're doing, get the Thunderer. Well, if you have a Thunderer, get it, go into, go into battle with it, load HE, you'll be done with your mission in one or two games, if that even. Now... Besides just having accurate guns that reload very fast, you have a 25 second base reload time, if you put the reload module on it, you're down like 23 seconds, which is insane. She's also pretty much an all around really solid battleship. Now, she is a conqueror base, obviously. So her citadel is above the waterline. However, unlike the formula they've kind of com they've kind of com com uh, come up with now, when it comes to battleships with very accurate main battery guns, she still has 32 millimeter extremities. So her bounder start is still 32. She can't outright be overmatched by common battleship caliber guns at tier 10. So if you still stay angled enough, you will bounce. Again, everything that's not an 18 inch, a 460 millimeter shell, and she still has a pretty decently thick citadel armor belt. So again, if you stay angled properly, which is quite easy to do because Thunderous gun angles are quite decent, you'll, you'll bounce most of everything. And she has a 10 second base rudder shift time. She has Conqueror's legendary mod or unique upgrade baked into it. So you have a battleship with decent battleship armor, 
heavy cruiser maneuverability with amazing guns. And you still get an improved heal. Now it's not quite the dry dock heal that the Conqueror gets, but it is still an improved heal. It's kind of like a War Spite 2.0 heal, if you will. Now she has been nerfed a bit. They basically forced you to choose between the reload module and the range module. They booped her main battery gun range down to 20 kilometers base, which is still plenty good because this ship has a 12 kilometer detection range once you take the range well once you take the the uh, module and the commander skill 12 kilometer concealment on a battleship that's this big plenty comfortable to play with a 20 kilometer range especially again with the 23 second reload time on the main battery guns with the ap and he that is this good now you can take the range and now you have a 25 or 26 second reload time at range but you still have some amaz some amazingly accurate guns so in my opinion perfect way to buffer you have to choose between going for the quicker re quicker reload but you gotta play a little bit closer or you can choose to play the old way when the sniper roll but you have a bit longer of a, of, a, of, a, of a reload time i have quite the history with this ship i have several videos on if you want to check out a more in-depth look at the thunder but yeah i think she's pretty well balanced today and i think she's pretty appropriate for a re-release if they ever decide to do that all right, going down to number two, we have everyone's favorite tier nine American destroyer, the Georgia. No, I did not misspeak there. This is essentially a destroyer. This is a battleship that can go 40 knots, which is nuts. Speed boost, flag equipped, you're rocking and rolling at 39.6 knots. And of course, if you take swift and silence now, there you go. You're above 40 knots. You can be on top of the enemy before they even know what's happening. Now, the Georgia is a proto-Iowa design, essentially, with six 18-inch guns. 457mm guns, again, can't overmatch 32, but still hits hard as hell. Ohio's guns, if you will, they, they hurt just about the same, because they are the same. So, yes, American 18-inch guns that are pretty accurate. She was actually the most accurate battleship in the game upon her release, but then they realized, hey, this 40-knot battleship with hyper-accurate 18-inch guns may not be the best thing ever. So that was one of the first things they nerfed about her after her release. Now, her armor isn't that great. On paper, she looks very comparable to the other American battleships, and again, on paper she is, but there's just some weird geometry about her hull design that, even if you're bowing, you'll still find yourself getting chunked for like 5 or 6k, even though they're hitting your your bow and like your cheek area. You won't get citadeled again, but again, some weird geometry is going on here, so pretty decent balancing factor right there. So the ship is fast, 18 inch guns, and she has Massachusetts level secondaries, which means that these American secondaries get out to 11.3 kilometers with the excellent American reload on these 127 millimeter guns, which makes this ship, especially before the commander rework, an excellent battleship to run down destroyers in because you can go faster than a lot of tier nine and 10 destroyers. Run them down, especially in the old days with the old secondaries, the American secondaries used to be hyper accurate, like we're talking laser beam accurate here. But of course, they have since been nerfed. Thank you, Commander Rework. They're still one of the more accurate set of secondaries, and after you get your secondaries get built up, they will absolutely be burting down any DD that's stupid enough to get caught by this ship. So not only is she good for that, she's great for running down a flank, you know, once you break the enemy's lines, rush down that flank, pop your speed boost, get those broadside shots on those enemy ships with your six 18-inch guns, and even though they have nerfed the, the uh, accuracy of the Georgia, she's still more than capable of delivering quite the punishing salvo with her guns. Very maneuverable ship here too, one of the favorites of myself and many of the player base, and hopefully they will eventually return her one day. All right, going on down to our honorable mention, we have the Tier 8 American aircraft carrier, the Enterprise. Ah, the Enterprise. What a fall this ship has had. This used to be one of the most cracked out CVs in the game. And she still is quite good, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this ship is garbage by any stretch of the imagination today, but she has been hit with quite, quite a number of global carrier nerfs, such as the the, the uh, plane speed nerf, the reticle rework, uh, this change, that change, so many changes to where she's gone from being, again, without a doubt, the most powerful CV in the game, to... You know, definitely still in like the upper half of the of the best carriers list, but not what she used to be. 
used to I playing this ship, even after the CV rework, could do very well in here. But again, she's just been beat down by so many nerfs, especially the rocket plane nerf. Well, the, the firing delay addition. Uh, the, these rockets hurt like hell. They were very easy to get on target. They have a very small reticle. But now, with that five second firing delay, ah. Uh, can't really hunt hunt down DDs like you used to with these rockets. Still pl pl uh, plenty capable against cruisers and battleships, of course. But yeah, not exactly what the ship used to be. And I, I think especially now that she's been hit with so many nerfs, I think she's appropriate for re-release. I mean, especially with, again, all the changes this thing has been through and the historical nature of this ship. This has to be one of the most decorated ships in the game by far and it's unfortunate that she wasn't quite balanced when they released her and they deemed her too op or too popular as their wording is and they pulled her so hopefully maybe one day she'll come back she has appeared in a couple of containers here and there for some summer events but hasn't in a while and going down to number one we have the tier five italian battleship the julius caesar i'm not going to butcher his actual uh the proper italian pronunciation of it because i know i am i was lucky enough to get this during the anniversary event I opened up my second batch of containers and there she was ladies and gentlemen now i had a video on this ship talking about how this had been hyped up as the most broken or overpowered ship in the game and after playing her for you know a few hours and recording it she's definitely quite strong but i wouldn't say absolutely busted she basically has good traits everywhere her guns are decently accurate they are decently punchy for their small caliber her armor is pretty good her speed of maneuverability is pretty good her concealment's pretty good her range is pretty good there's no one absolutely busted factor about this ship however since she's at tier 5 yeah this ship is a little bit strong for tier 5 i think you could easily move the ship up to tier 6 and she'd be perfectly fine in most cases which they actually tried to do that some time ago put the uh, caesar up to tier six but there was understandably a large pushback from current owners of the caesar as they bought her as a tier five ship and that's perfectly understandable and reasonable so wargaming left it alone uh, alone they came out and they reintroduced her as the Novorissiysk, which is a tier 6 Soviet battleship. And that is what happened with the Caesar. She was transferred to the Soviet Navy as part of Italy's war reparations, and then she sunk at harbor, unfortunately. So, yeah, a very strong ship. One that is quite fun to play, quite good, and ranked right now as well, helping me get through the ranked grind. And a, a ship that I don't think is quite as crazy as, as it's hyped up to be and you know this ship came out quite some time ago so we've had time for more ships to be added to the game a little bit of power creep here at tier 5 but she is still hands down in my opinion the best tier 5 battleship in the game and one that has been removed and she's still in super containers she's not even in christmas containers anymore i don't think but you could still maybe get lucky enough and pick her up in a super container. Your best bet would be if they repeat the uh, anniversary event like they did this year for next year. And you have a large enough fleet in your port to get enough super containers to where you could potentially get the ship. I was just lucky enough that uh, because of the nature of doing World Warships as basically a second job for YouTube, I pretty much had every other ship in the game. And this was one of like the two I could have gotten out of a super container for the anniversary event. So guys, let me know in the comments down below what your top 5 removed premium ships would be. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Run away to 45,000 subscribers and again, make sure you go enter into the 40k giveaway on last Monday's video. Just follow the instructions there. Make sure you get in the contest for the premium ships. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.